Whether you're a seasoned mariner or just testing the water, your hometown marina has all the info you need to navigate the thrills and spills of the boating lifestyle. Coming to you from our home port of Glencoe Marina at the beautiful Lake of the Ozarks, host Deborah Wolf joins boating expert Sherry Jackson and Captain Steve Lemons to help you get off the dock and on the water down by from your hometown marina. Welcome to your hometown marina. I'm your host, Deborah Wolf, and we're coming to you from Glencoe Marina at the beautiful Lake of the Ozarks. I'm joined by Glencoe owner Sherry Jackson and Captain Steve Lemons. Today we're going to talk about some vital items that you don't want to leave the dock without, and then we're going to teach you how to come back into the dock without damage to your boat or your ego. <laughs> Sherry, you were saying that there are some things legally you have to have on your boat. There are. You have to have a life jacket per person. You have to have a throw cushion. You have to have, uh, there's several things on your boat that you have to have. We try to encourage every customer who buys a new boat, whether it's new to them or brand new boat, either one, um, to go down to the sea store and see Justin because there's always ropes. There's always something that they need and he, he keeps a fully stocked store for that purpose. We're going to go down to the dock in the sea store here in a little bit at Glencoe and show you firsthand what items you need on your boat every single time you leave the dock. Then, Captain Steve, we're also going to teach folks how to dock boats. And it, it turns out, like many boating things, be a lot more complicated than I ever expected. Well, it's not really complicated. It just uh, You just have to think about what you're doing and how you're going to approach the dock. And uh, Do you want to back it in or do you want to drive in? Uh, it's a single engine, twin engine. Uh, access on and off the boat is the big reason. Um, you know, a lot of the smaller slips at the Lake of the Ozarks, you've got a 30-foot boat and it's a 24-foot slip, how do you get in and out of the boat? The Don't ask me. It's <laughs> <laughs> to back it in. And, you know, and we hear uh, that one of the things that I've always stipulated when we sell boats here, at the, when we sell boats here at the Lake of the Ozarks is, is I've got a little test that everybody has to pass before I get out of the boat. Okay. And I make sure that they're comfortable driving the boat either with a single engine or twin, and I ask them how they're going to drive it. They're, park it and stuff like that and we'll practice on that and I like to teach the ladies to drive and uh, you know a twin engine boat so that somebody else is always comfortable driving the boat other than the captain. Uh, the modern day boats nowadays have extremely expensive parts hanging off the back of the boat and of course if that's out to the public which is out toward the channel that means that it could be easily taken off the back of the boat. If it's tucked up against the ramp on the inside out of sight, out of mind. Uh, also, uh, wear and tear the boat itself. Um, if you've got a boat that uh, uh, has a, uh, the way it's positioned on the dock as far as into the sun, let's say the evening sun or the afternoon sun, you'll, you'll get more uh, deterioration of like canvases, uh, paint and stuff. That makes that sense. Boat. But if you turn it around, the only thing that is affected is just the point of the boat. There, like I said, there's, there's a multitude of reasons in reasons for backing in as opposed to driving in. Now, single engine versus twin engine when you come to bring it into the slip. Single engine boat is a little bit more uh, testing uh, as far as to be able to, to get it turned the right direction and go in reverse and spin it the other direction, pull it in forward so that the nose comes where you want. Uh, other than uh, like the twin engine boat is uh, one of the famous analogies that a lady came up with one day was it's like driving a shopping cart. <laughs> oh, that's and scary. It, and it's exactly <laughs> like driving a shopping cart. Uh, to turn a boat, uh, if you want to push a, a shopping cart to the left, what do you do? You pull your left hand back, you push your right hand forward. Oh, wow. You do the same thing on a motor on a boat that's two engines, one forward, one reverse. Okay. And it will oh. go that direction. Very simple. A great tip that I heard the other day, which I think is excellent, is to rent boats before you buy a boat. And I noticed that down on the dock earlier, Justin, there was a family going out, and he was taking great time to go over it with them, all the ins and outs, things they absolutely need to know. You guys probably see a lot of that here at Glencove. We do. We have, we have a lot of customers that will rent a boat and they'll come back and First, they try and buy the rental boats. Of course. I bet they do because I'm used to it now. It yeah, feels good. I want this one. But um, they will come back, and, and we've had people, too, like on the Tritunes. They want to rent one first. They want to see how it rides on the lake. It's a great way to find out. And Justin's very good at what he does. He goes down there. He really goes through the boat with the customer, and, and he explains everything, you know, so that they, they are very comfortable when they go out. Once again, what I hear you guys saying that I really applaud Glencoe for is you do not let people leave unprepared. The big trick is is the safety aspect. You know, we don't want anybody that, that rents a boat from us or even buys a boat from us 
to go out there and, and they call us after they're gone for let's say an hour and a half and they call and say, hey, I hit my dock. Yeah. You know, it, it's not any fun in a new boat purchase or even a rental. You know, we don't want to get that. We're at the 26 mile marker and we just crashed the pontoon. So yes, it's it's it, it takes a few more minutes to learn, but it's it's well worth it in the long run. So. Well, and that's the part about having your hometown marina is that what everybody of water you're on, you find that marina where you're comfortable. Find those people where you know that you can pull in or you can ring them up and say, hey, this is going on, that's going on, or I just I can't get this down. I just cannot <laughs> figure out how to dock this thing. And quite frankly, that's why Steve has a lot of repeat customers for sales. That's why Justin has a lot of repeat customers, people that come back year after year. They know when they're going to be here. They know when they want to rent that boat, and they book it in the, in the winter, basically, for that coming year. And they come back here year after year, you know, service the same thing. Just, you know, because we try very hard to take care of our customers, they continue to come back to us, and that's what it's all about. Absolutely. When you come back to your hometown marina, we're going to go down to the sea store and talk with Justin, take a look at those items that you need before you ever leave the dock. What's the difference between sea -Doo and other watercraft? sea -Doo is the only watercraft with intelligent break and reverse, so it can stop up to 100 feet sooner than other watercraft. which means more control than you've ever had on the water. And effortless maneuvering at the dock. Sea Doo, ultimate control on the water. Welcome back to your hometown marina. I'm your host, Deborah Wolf. There's certain things that you need before you actually get off the dock. Justin Wehrmeyer with Glencoe Marina is here to tell us what we need from the sea store. The main thing that you need would be dock lines. Um, I don't know how many boats that uh, I've brought here for customers to clean or sell or whatever that have no lines on the boat whatsoever. Uh, they're on their dock, but they're not on the boat. And you pull up to a restaurant somewhere, what, uh, you know, how are you going to tie the boat up? Usually we, we tell people four dock lines in your slip uh, so you can center the boat over the lift. Uh, at least four more dock lines for your boat. Uh, when you go to a restaurant, um, six to eight dock lines would probably be good. You'll want fenders or bumpers or buoys. Most people will get four, which is two for each side. You know, if you're rafting off at uh, Party Cove or something like that, and you have somebody tying up on each side of you, you'll want, uh, you'll want four of them. They're fairly expensive, uh, but you, you know, you'll want to go for the bigger ones uh, that you can get because they'll obviously protect your boat a lot better than the smaller ones will. Yeah, you can buy some, uh, some cheap dock lines if you want. They don't have to, to look good, but uh, make sure you get the, the bumpers or the buoys uh, because uh, that's what's actually going to keep your boat from uh, ending up with a $1,000 repair bill. And I would think right at the top of the list, life jackets? At least one life jacket for every person uh, on board, whether it's 30 or 40 life jackets, uh, make sure you have uh, at least one for every person. And everybody uh, under the age of seven uh, will need to wear their life jacket at all times. Even the puppies now yep, have life jackets. Yep, we sell a lot of dog life jackets as well. So there are different type of life jackets uh, for different uh, uses. Now I noticed anchors in the sea store. So is that something that people lose as well? Oh yeah, yeah. I, we probably sold three or four anchors with the boat races that were out here last wow. weekend. You know, one guy showed up and uh, didn't even have an anchor. Uh, didn't realize he didn't have an anchor. I prefer on this lake um, the uh, the river anchors just because of uh, the the mud bottom of, to this lake. That's something I never thought about. That it really depends on what kind of body of water you're on and what kind of anchor you use. Yeah, that's just something that you learn over time. You know, you buy one anchor and it doesn't work and uh, you buy another anchor it doesn't work until you actually get the the one that'll actually hold your boat and that's uh, what i try to provide people is the you know i've seen seen it happen before and uh, i'll try to cut out the first two anchors for you so you get the right one i know you guys sell whistles in the sea store yeah whistles are uh, uh, sounding devices are required on the boat uh, either whistles horns or air horns you definitely want a first aid kit. Uh, somebody's always cutting themselves uh, every single one of our rental boats we send out with uh, at least one quart of oil and one quart of uh, gear lube uh, those are the two things that uh, uh, will uh, will usually sound an alarm off on your boat and uh, they're the easiest to take care of but uh, you you're almost always needing some of those at some point so yeah definitely want to take some oils with you would you say that even if you think you're only going to go for a short little cruise, you should have water and those types of things on the boat just in case something happens, you get stuck out there? Uh, it does not take long to get dehydrated out here, and uh, if you're floating around 
uh, or being towed somewhere. I've, I've had to tow rental boats back, and uh, it takes uh, four, six, eight hours sometimes to tow a boat from way on the other end of the lake. You want to paddle on a boat if your boat ever quits working. You know, you want to be able to paddle it somewhere instead of just float into the shoreline. A bucket in case you need to bail it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the buckets, uh, they're probably overrated. If your boat's sinking that fast, then you, your Start best bet is to just jump out. That's and, what the life jackets are for? Yeah, that's what the life jackets are for. Just jump out and let somebody else deal with it. <laughs> Stay tuned to your hometown marina. We'll be back. Ozark Barge and Dock has been delivering the best quality workmanship and design on the Lake of the Ozarks since 1988. Designed to provide you with low maintenance and durability, our docks will float you through years of fun and recreation. Even in rough water, you can enjoy the lake like it should be. Contact Ozark Barge and Dock at 573-372-5501 or come visit us at our P Road location just off Highway 5 between Gravoy Mill and Lori. Sit back and relax while our skilled employees use top quality materials to create the dock of your dreams. We cruised on over to the Captain's Kitchen to meet with Kitchen Manager John Stubblefield and Chef Brian Arno. can be found on the Your Hometown Marina webpage at www.glencovemarina.com. Thank you for submitting your questions to Your Hometown Marina. We always welcome them. Just send us an email at yhtm at glencovemarina.com. Justin, a lot of people pull into the slip and they hop out, but they don't tie that boat up right and bad things happen. It either floats away or it gets knocked all over the place because of the waves. What are some tips on tying up your boat? The first tip I would give to somebody is to come up to the dock slowly. A lot of people fly up to the dock, floor it in reverse, floor it in forward, floor it in reverse, and that just kind of gets you all messed up. So the key is to show up to the dock initially in good shape. And then uh, if somebody's there to help you, hand them the rope. I've had many instances where people would jump out of the boat, fall on the dock, you know, trying to hurry up and help us. But if there's somebody there to help you tie up, then that's their job to, to help you tie up, let them do their job. And uh, if you're going to tie the boat up, make sure your buoys are out uh, to protect from scratches. Come in slowly so you don't scratch it. And then try and tie it so that the lines are working against each other so the boat's not drifting. Get the cleat on your boat as close to the cleat on the dock as possible okay. so there's not a whole bunch of line left over. Now let's go back to docking a boat because I have seen people, honestly, I'll, I'll be honest, I was taught to dock a boat by, you know, flooring it and then pulling back on it. You now tell me I've been doing it wrong for a long time. So what is the actual technique? The key is to uh, just pop it into forward, bring it back to neutral immediately and let the boat drift to the dock. Okay. You don't want to come up to the dock while you're still in gear. You want to come up to the dock okay. when you're in neutral. That's part of the planning ahead thing, too. You have to know which way the wind's blowing so that, uh, you know, you can compensate for that and point yourself in a direction where the wind can blow you into the dock or something like that. So there's a lot of planning ahead that you, you need to do to, in order to get to a dock safely and not just uh, tear up your boat. So once again, it's practice makes perfect, but be careful when you're practicing, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and a lot of people like to practice our dock here because we have fenders and carpet. You know, practice on a dock where it's, it's in a cove and, uh, you know, there's not waves or wind or uh, people everywhere everywhere and it's really not terribly difficult the, the key is to go slow stay tuned when we come back we're going to go see the two-time best bartender at the lake Justin Wallace and see what he's mixed up for us today Holly lift boat lifts your boat is a major investment 
Make sure it sits on a pilot lift. When you need a boat lift to raise your boat out of the water, choose the one voted best boat lift at the lake. Choose Poly Lift. Any size, built with the best quality construction, a lifetime warranty on the tanks, and the service to stand behind it. We don't just build boat lifts, we build Poly Lifts. We don't just build boat lifts, we build Poly Lifts. Welcome back to your hometown marina. I'm your host, Deborah Wolf, and I'm here at Captain Ron's in Sunrise Beach, Missouri, with two time best bartender at the lake, Justin Wallace. Hello there. Hello. We have invited you back to say goodbye, but we're not going to leave you <laughs> high and dry because Justin has our cast off cocktail. Today I'm going to be making a blister in the sun. It's going to have blueberry vodka and strawberry rum. Hometown Marina's webpage at the GlencoMarina.com website. Just I guess it's time to say goodbye then. Goodbye. Slancha. <laughs> Cheers. It's all done with the thank yous to our sponsors. We'll say goodbye with a little video from our hometown marina, our home port at the Lake of the Ozarks, and we wish you all the best at your hometown marina. See you guys next time. Cheers. We got good this. I think we're kind of getting good at it. Yeah. Yeah. Mmm. That's yummy. It is nice. I just don't want to go back to work. <laughs> don't want to.